Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. In me going to El Salvador to speak God's word, I was asked if I would like to teach at a leadership training program that they have to help others be leaders in the Christian ministry, which I was excited to do. And as I was thinking about that, I was thinking, you know, in God's Word, you can read about a lot of leaders teaching other leaders about leadership. And so that's where this teaching came about. There's a lot of leaders teaching leadership, like Paul. Jesus Christ taught, you know, taught his disciples and his apostles, gave them direct things to do. Peter, John, there, as, as you work, you know, in God's word, well, how to be a leader, how to help people, how to take care of things. There's a lot of people teaching about it at different times. And so I started in Timothy because I know that Timothy's a leadership epistle. And I want to go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 1. And it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, in the believing, in the right way of believing. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I pointed out that uh, Paul, you know, most of his writings use, talks about God and Jesus Christ. And he always talks about grace, mercy, and peace. He wants people to have them in his life. So he's talking to Timothy. He's writing to him here. And he starts out by saying these things that we just read. And in verse three, it says, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge, charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So the first thing he tells them, he says, charge people. He says, charge them. Let them know that they're not teaching the right doctrine. Right do doctrine is right believing, and right believing gets right results. So you want, what he wanted was he wanted people to get have right results. Right believing gets right results. You want to be a problem solver? You got to have right. But you know, if you want to be a problem solver, you got to have the right things to, to say. You got to be believing rightly, which means right doctrine, right believing gets right results. And it works that way. And that's why it's so important to pray. It's so important to lift things to God, tell God what's going on, and ask for help to have that connection with our Heavenly Father. Pretty cool. So that's what they do right doctrine. Then in verse 4, it says, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith or believing. So do is in italics. <laughs> but that's pretty interesting. Fables are just made up stories. And people do that quite a bit. I'll tell you who does it the most. The devil, the adversary, he comes up with the wildest, dreamy, sensational stuff, but they're all made up. He talks about cosmic stuff going on in the atmosphere. And then there's truth out there. Of course, he's a liar of all liars from the beginning, but he does this. And these things 
bombard people's minds. So when it comes to believing to get results, they will trust almost any weird thing, like tarot cards or a seance, you know, get some power, some information from the other world. The sp there's, you know, there is a spiritual battle going on, but I want to know from the father of dreams. You know, I mean, but that's how it, that's how sly the adversary is. There's nothing bigger right now than all this supernatural stuff, movie-wise, Marvel comics and all that. Just, just all kinds of stuff that are not the truth of God's word. Verse five says, now the end of the commandment is charity, the love of God in the renewed mind and manifestation out of a pure conscience, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, which from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangle. And there's so much of this, and I'm going to tell you something, there's so much of this has creeped into the Christian world a ton of this and where it's just come on tell me tell me i want to know what to do about the first thing i hear what's the first word and i'll tell you what that is well it's the adversary working through seed boys to bring all this consciousness to people and then they'll try this and then they'll do it and they'll even get some results but you know what it is Wrong doctrine, wrong results. They, wrong results. People get hurt. It says, and some have turned turned aside into vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, any law. <laughs> Just make up a law. Understanding neither what they say nor where they are firm. I'll tell you what they say. They say what the adversary wants them to say. And where they're affirmed is from the devil spirit kingdom. And that is, in a lot of ways, who we fight against. So Paul was saying, Timothy, make sure it's the right doctrine, which is right believing, which will get people right results. So what do we do with this? What do we do when we run across people that are like this? What does the word say that we're to do? Well, let's go keep your finger in Timothy, but let's go to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. The last chapter in Romans. And this is the chapter where Paul is commending all the believers who are doing great works for him. Great works for God. But in verse 17, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division. So, what are we to do with the people that are teaching and promoting wrong doctrine, which, which is wrong believing, which will get people wrong results? He says, To mark them which cause division. And divisions is what the adversary wants more than anything. And offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and beat the hell out of them. No, it doesn't say that. No, it doesn't say that. Argue with them. No. Put a hex on them. It doesn't say anything like that. What's it say to do? Avoid them. Avoid them. That's what we're to do, avoid them. For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus, but their own bellies and by good words and fair speech deceive the heart of the simple. The simple means harmless. They just hear these things and they go, oh yeah, I'm gonna try that. You mean you take a bunch of bones and you let them dry out and you shake them and you, throw them down, and the way they are shaped tells you what to do, I'm going to try that. Or tea leaves. I don't even know how, how a lot of these things work because I'm not interested in them. 
but people try the wildest things. The wildest things. Verse 19 says, for your obedience has come abroad unto all, and I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good. Understand what's good. You know what's good? The words of God. And simple unto evil. We don't need to know everything that is to know about evil. We just know it's bad. I don't know how those bones work. Okay. I've never... What? Well, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know well, how they're, they're supposed, supposed to work. work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or tea leaves or tarot cards right. or any of that stuff. But but some of it's more subtle than that. Yeah. A lot more subtle than that. Verse 20 says, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. So in other words, you stand on the word, the right doctrine, and the adversary will be under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So we got to watch out for divisions. And divisions always start by not adhering to the right doctrine. Mm -hmm. It's where they always start. Let's add a little something. Hey, I got an idea. You know something? We should baptize. And I'm going to tell you why. They've been doing it for years. There's plenty of records throughout Christian history of all the baptisms that have been done. It has to be good. No. All of that's a bunch of crap. We're to be baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we just go, no, that doesn't quite make it. You see that? When we know the word, we should speak the word and tell people what the word says. Let's go to Acts chapter 20. We, we, we were there last week, but I, in that same section where Paul is talking to the leadership, he has some things about the doctrine and division. You're going to start reading in verse 27. For I have not shunned unto you all the counsel of God. When we get here at this fellowship, I try very hard to speak the word. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God. You feed the church of God with right doctrine, right believing, so they get right results. Which he purchased with his own blood. Wait a minute. God doesn't bleed. Well, it, it's a figure of speech talking about his own blood, meaning his own son from his own. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men rise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that the, by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Paul here is leaving them, and he says, I'm just going to give you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, edify you, and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Pretty neat. So that's what he's done there. Let's go back to Timothy. And we're going to start in chapter 2, verse 1. First of all, it says, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And these words, supplication means prayer, for specific needs, prayers is prayers in general. These are all four different Greek words, and people have studied these and gave you the 
what they all mean and stuff. Intercession means prayers in behalf of others. And giving of thanks. That's one way of prayer. Just saying, thank you, God, for, way, for what you've done for me already. And for all men. One of the things that I like about this and what I think about this verse with these four different ways of talking about prayer, what God is saying, first of all, pray and uh, pray and uh, pray and uh, pray. It's a big deal in life. Pray for kings and for all that are in authority that, th that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. And lots of times I pray this. I pray, God, I thank you for our, you know, our leaders, our government, our situation, and that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life. And I, all, a lot of times I add, so that we can have free course to help people, because that's what it's talking about here. And I'll show you this as we continue reading in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. The reason for the quiet and peaceable life is so we can help all men become saved. We can be part of the team that helps God in having all men to be saved and come unto a knowledge of the truth. And we've been taught this means an accurate knowledge of the truth, something that we are very concerned about. We want to be accurate because <laughs> right doctrine, accurately taught, gives you right believing, which gives you right results. For well, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. That's what we do. People can only get born again or get saved by someone giving them the testimony about Jesus Christ so they can believe that God raised them from the dead and confess them as Lord in their life. That's what we tell people. That's what we share with people. That's the most important thing that we can tell people. And then we can tell them more promises and principles that they can use in his life, in their life. Verse six says, who gave himself a ransom for all. That's what we tell them. To be testified in due time. Whereunto I am a, a ordained to a preacher and an apostle. I speak the word, the truth in Christ, and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. And the word verity means truth. Means truth. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without raft and doubting. This lifting up of holy hands, by the way, was a custom in the lands and times of the Bible. When people prayed, they lifted up their hands to God. They, you know, sometimes they would lay right flat on the ground with their hands up. It was uh, the way the Oriental person would, would give respect to God. It, is, it was a custom in the lands and times of the Bible. It doesn't freak me out if I see someone lifting holy hands to God. It's in, it's in God's word. It doesn't do it, anything to me. The only thing that I think about, are they doing it for show or is it a real heart? But I don't judge that. It's not up to me to judge that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people do like to look at me, look at me, you know what I mean? So they do a little show. But... It's in God's word, and it's a custom of the lands and times of the Bible. So no problem there. This next section, lots of times I just don't even read. I just skip it. But I'm going to read it today. And uh, it says in verse 9, it says, in like manner also. 
when it says in like manner also, it's talking about the customs of the lands and times of the Bible. Okay? That's what it's talking about. It says, in like in like manner also, that the women adore themselves in modest peril with shamefulness, faces, and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. See, in the lands and times of the Bible, if a woman dressed like this, she would be doing it for show. Look at me. But which becometh women professing godliness would with good work in other words what he's saying is it'd be better if you just wanted to be more godly but you know what some people do with this section that i'm reading here is they say well the woman is uh you know well really the woman is not as good as a man and is so you know it just isn't they should, she's got to watch out what she's doing but that cannot be right and I'm going to show you this. It cannot be right. Let's go to verse 11. Let the women learn to be silent with all subjection. Men love this one. But this is talking about the customs and the lands and times of the Bible. But I, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to absorb authority over the man but to be in silence. Just keep your mouth shut. And then it goes on to this other thing. And Adam was first formed, then Eve. And it, uh, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they, and the word they means the husband and the wife, Continue in the faith, in the right way of believing, right doctrine, and charity, the love of God, in the renewed mind and manifestation, and holiness with sobriety. None of this would I teach. None of this would I tell anybody. It contradicts some of the word, a lot of the word of God. Contradicts it. Cannot be right. It has to either be in translation or in understanding. Well, I believe it's in understanding. See, Paul said in this manner, just like you pray with your hands up, that's a custom of the lands and times of the Bible. This here is customs in lands and times of the Bible. But even in that, it was short-lived. I mean, really <laughs> short-lived. Go to Colossians. Keep your finger here in Timothy if you'd like. Go to Colossians uh, 3.10. This goes back to divisions. Divisions is a, well, it's what the adversary wants. And let me tell you what the adversary is doing with divisions. I watched some of the uh, Olympics. Every commercial talks about everybody being like-minded and together. Every commercial. It's the modern thing. Can't we all get along? But the slightness of it is they are, every group tells you their differences causing more division. Colossians 3.10. For there is neither Greek nor, okay, let's go to 10. I'll read 10. But have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge of, after the image of him that created him, God. So every man who is born again mm -hmm. has the image of God in him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Cynthian, born nor free, but Christ is all in, in all. No divisions. Once you're born again, you're part of the church of God, and there's no divisions. What about this Scythian? Who are those? We know the barbarians are the unbelievers, right? Foreigners. The Scythians were even worse. They were the worst people on the earth. Uh, I don't know if there's any way we can uh, 
compare, compare them except saying they're like the hell's angels. <laughs> you never invite a hell's angel to your fellowship. They're going to ride in with their bikes and kick everything down. You know what I mean? The worst. But here it says barbarian nor Scythian. Can you imagine you're in Corinth and you get this letter and you read, there is neither Greek nor Jew and you're a Greek. You go, all right, this is cool. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. This is great. Barbarian, okay, we can let the unbelievers in too, okay. Scythians, the, those guys, born nor free, but Christ is all and in, in all. The word of God does the opposite of what the world says it does. It gets rid of divisions. But all these group, women for women, they just want to show you the differences. Black people matter. They just want to show you the difference. They're dividing, not pulling together. It's true. It's, it's kind of funny how the world says, we won't, can't we all just get along, but at the same time, dividing people. It's exactly what they're doing, dividing. Yeah, well, let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, in verse 2, it says, I beseech, beseech Adodius and beseech Syncheus, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellows, help those women which labor with me in the gospel. Wait a minute, I thought the women were supposed to shut up. That's not what the word says here, does it? It says help the women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Pretty neat. I like that. You know something, when a, when a person gets born again, they get Holy Spirit, they're a believer. They can do all the works that Jesus Christ did in greater. There's not a little section left out of women. You know what I mean? It's not true. We're to have no divisions. Paul has said to Timothy, watch out for divisions, and divisions happen in wrong doctrine. We should be the people that bring everybody together with the right doctrine. Galatians chapter 3. In verse 27. For as many of you, of you as have been baptized unto Christ put, have put on Christ. For there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male or female, for ye are all one in Christ. See, in, in uh, using the keys and how the Bible interprets itself, when you see something that... Uh, that doesn't line up with the rest of the word, you have to ask yourself, is it in translation or understanding? And in Timothy, where we read, we have to see that it's talking about in like manner. The like manner is people pray with their hands up. It's, he was talking about customs of the times of the Bible, in the lands and times of the Bible. It's not what the word says. In many places, it, talk, it, it doesn't distinguish between men and women. It doesn't do it. So what right doctrine does is bring things together. No division. See that? No division. Whatever distinction there is, then they're causing divisions. While they say, let's all get along especially me, whoever I am, you know, what kind of group I'm in. Pretty wild. Go to Romans 16. We were there earlier. This is just to show you in an abundance of verses, because one of the keys in, you know, studying the Bible, if there's an abundance of verses that say one thing, 
and there's one or two that seem to say something else, it has to be either in translation or understanding. It's not in translation in the part that I looked at, but it isn't understanding what Paul was talking about. And some of the things that are in there, you could apply, but not all of it. Not when women are to shut up. That's not what it's talking about. But hey, you don't want a, a man or a woman, you don't want to overdress. Guys do the same thing. They, you know, especially sports guys, they have all this gold and stuff, you know. Is, isn't that for show? Girls that do, you know, a lot of different things, isn't that for show? See, believers aren't to show, look at me. They're to show, here's Jesus Christ. See that? That's what it's talking about. Okay. I said, uh, Romans chapter 16 it says, I commend unto you, Phoebe, my brother, oh, I'm sorry, sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Caesarea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, that ye assist her in whatsoever business she has need of you for she she has been a sucker of many and of myself also the first one that paul talks about here in this whole list of believers that were doing good stuff was a woman i'm not gonna say anything bad about a woman <laughs> i'm not gonna say she has to be quiet in church I'm not going to say, tell her how she should dress. I'm not going to do anything that would make any kind of division. All I'm going to do is praise God that they believe in God and they're born again. And let's move ahead and try to help others have the same privilege. Let's, let's get a bunch of people to, to defect out of this world. This world is terrible. But being in the kingdom of God is cool. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. While there, sign up for our newsletter. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 